Hey guys, this is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Tool Time with Strider Prime. And today I am reviewing this new product that just recently came out within the past few months. And I've been hearing about this from a few modelers. Actually, I think I saw a video of uh, Zach Aurelius talk about this. But I was skeptical at getting a new airbrush. How lately, my um, Iowata Neo uh, airbrush uh, has been not producing the results that it used to be. Sometimes I have to work hard to clean it, to maintain it, to adjust it so I can use it. And sometimes it'll work, sometimes it will not work. Giving me some somewhat decent but well below performance that I cannot accept, unfortunately. And in my recent videos that I posted, uh, in other two time videos, um, this shows, uh, I'm showing, you know, some problems with it. But I needed to move forward. I cannot move back. I can't stick with what I have. I do have two other Neos that I can clean up, but will I have the same problem that presented itself, or do I need to upgrade? And I think this is my newest upgrade. What I was a bit skeptical about getting a new airbrush is I was afraid of buying one that was not going to work well. Because if you buy a cheap airbrush, whether it's 20 or $30, you're getting below performance work. Maybe for, maybe for a brief time it will be great, while sometimes it will not. But Gal Gal Gallery? Gallery, I think it's pronounced right. I don't know if I'm saying it wrong has been producing some amazing results from other model builders that I've been watching online, on on Twitter, on Instagram. And I've been getting a lot of feedback from them, from, you know, seeing people's uh, comments. Um, I got this at Amazon for a good price of $45. During the Amazon sales that they usually have every now and then, uh, you could have gotten it for maybe 10 or 20 percent less than the value, but regardless of the case, I was still on the fence. But I decided to, to um, bite the bullet and buy this this new tool that has just been coming out right now, and I've been hearing a lot of positive positive results. I don't know if you guys have picked up one of these. I don't know if this will be your new workhorse, but uh, I need to test this out and find out if this will produce the results that I'm hoping for. I got this on Amazon for $45. Um, it's This is the GAD, oh no, the GHAD 39. This is a dual action airbrush, similar to any all other dual action airbrushes. But it has the capability of putting in a .35 nozzle or a .5 millimeter nozzle. Now I know that .35 millimeter is great for painting, while the .5 is for larger uh, areas, great for priming. Uh, it says here, innovative 8 micro air channels, 8 max system, drop in self-centering structure, one uh, one quarter and one half ounce, two replaceable smooth cups, 0.35 millimeter and 0.5 millimeter, two replaceable needles and nozzle combination. So you do have um, not only the, the needle, but also the nozzle. We'll review that in a minute. There are, four, there are five versions of this. This is the classic, advanced, premium, ace, and supreme, but I got the advanced for the relatively affordable price of 45 US dollars. Um, don't know anything else around here that could tell me. All right, we're gonna review this and take a look at it and find out if this, if, if I made a wise choice or should I return it? A 
open it up. An elegant and strong box. Nice logo. Pop it open. Dear customer, each Galid airbrush undergoes rigorous spray testing before leaving the factory. There might be minor paint residue present. We apologize for any inconvenience for this cause. If the product indeed has an issue, no need to return it. Just contact the confirmed problem and we'll arrange a reshipment for you. That's very nice. Good warranty. Right there. We have some documentation. Very, very straightforward documentation on what to use, how to clean it up. It's the quick start guide, of course. Spraying, of how to get the perfect spraying effects. Obviously, we don't want that. How to switch colors. That's good. Cool. I'll review that. Let me adjust the camera a bit. Stand by. So we have some uh, sealant. Sealant. Um, parts here, the internals. This is the 0.5 millimeter um, needle. Here's the 0.5 millimeter nozzle for the needle. We got a hefty supply of lubrication for the airbrush. For the airbrush. <laughs> this is the, I believe, the one quarter nozzle um, or reservoir. Pretty big. But you get a bigger one. A full. Half ounce. Wow, it's nice and shiny. There's a video on um, on Amazon and probably on the website where it shows more um, the uh, manufacturing of the airbrush. And of course, speaking of the airbrush, here it is. Wow, this definitely has some weight to it. Oh my. Dual action, push in, for the air to come out, then pull back to uh, spray. And you have the uh, the little um, gaskets around, I was going to say, not sealant, but gaskets around there. And this is, of course, the 0.35 millimeter nozzle. It has a a plastic cap that's actually really nice to cover your airbrush so that way it doesn't fall or break. Amazing. And then of course this is the uh, the control thing to actually uh, actually to open it up to take out the needle. Actually let's see how it feels. Hold on a second here. That's a nice pointy needle there. Close it. Oop, there we go. And this is allows you to, I guess, control how much the uh, this can go back. Let me see. Yeah. So meant for like you know you spray a bit. Hold on. Spray and pull back a little bit, but then you don't have to stress your finger going backwards. The needle right there. This whole thing came out like that. Wow. Push it in. 
supposedly there's a, a patent type connector here where the airflow is more uh, inwards and I wonder if, I could, if it's in the manual I don't see it here but it's on the website Now this comes with the um, quick release connector right there, but I don't have it, so I'm going to be removing this from here. Let me see. Actually, can this be removed? And let me see. Yeah, I can remove it and put on, put this on a regular tube. But I need to get a quick release also, so that's something that I'm going to have to invest in getting. Well, I think the best thing to do is test out with some paint, and I'm going to going to use the smaller. Uh, the smaller one. I'm going to get some spoons, I'm going to get some paint, and we're going to test it out and see how it looks. So give me a moment while I, pre while I prepare my uh, workbench. So before we get started, we're going to replace the uh, cap, the, um, the needle and the uh, nozzle for this. So I think we just need to do is I think, turn this. Open the rocket. Open this. Slide this out. Now we can't put it in just yet because if we put it in, we may damage the nozzle here. So we take this cover off. Remove this. Let me take. Oh, that came off easily. Hold on. Okay. Guess we're gonna have to do it this way. There we go. put it there. I gotta take it out from here. So I'm gonna put it back into this container which is in there. And I guess I have to take out the whole thing. <sighs> but this thing is tart. This one's tart in there. I have to put that in here. Then close this up like that. I wish to give you another one of these, but I might. There we go. Now it's coming. that in there and cover it up and then take this needle out remove the protected cover put this one here proper maintenance of course and we'll put it in here because clearly we don't want it to be flying about <sighs> now you slide it in here. It's a thicker needle. And there it goes. Put that in there. And then put it in there. There we go. And uh, I'm going to prime a few parts on the kit. I haven't pulled out what kit I have. I have some, you know, left some other model kits that I've 
built and never painted. But, alright, so now this is prepared with the 0.5 millimeter needle and the nozzle. And then we're going to try out priming and see how it looks. So let me prepare the, the, uh, the spray booth for that. All right, got the airbrush ready. I'm gonna pour a little um, cleaning thinner. Make sure it flows pretty well. Let's see how it looks. I always do this as like a pre, you know, precursor. Make sure nothing is in there. Pretty good pressure. some thinner already you know ready to go. I want to see how it flows using the 0.5. There we go. It's a lot, but I got something. So let's see how it looks. Good control. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to try a, a larger blast. Oh yeah. It's pretty nice. Alright, let's test it out on a old kit. If anybody knows what this is, we can be friends. <laughs> this is an old first grade Adele. At the time when uh, the age kits were coming out, this is, gr this is a I have a few of these, and I said, you know, I'm I'm never gonna throw these away because they'll serve a purpose. Okay. It is very smooth, I'll have to say that, certainly. And I'm using a very low pressure here. About 20, about 15 PSI. That's pretty much how much I've been setting the, my airbrushes for, uh, my compressors for a long time. It's actually very smooth. Far better than my um, than my Neo, and I have a much more stabler control with this. Let me let me finish this up. Give me a minute. Okay, this paint goes on nice and smooth. Actually, I have to take these off so I can paint it like this. still see a little bit of the green under there, but that's kind of okay. But what is okay is how well the coverage is on the paint. It's very nice and smooth. 
Though that is one thing that I've noticed on my previous airbrush where sometimes, okay, sometimes the uh, paint will build up in the front of the nozzle. And that could be a problem with the nozzle, which I did replace, or the needle. And I had to sand down the needle. But still, it came out pretty good as you can see here with this new brand and using a 0.5 millimeter uh, needle is great for <coughs> is great for like um, priming and there are certain paints out there that benefits with the 0.5 needle I believe the Alaclad paints you can utilize it better and certain um, uh, acrylic paints like um, like the most famous acrylic paints that many people use um, Vallejo paints I've always had trouble with Vallejo paints using on my current airbrush which was at the 0.35 but this maybe I, I'll be able to use a Vallejo paint uh, using the 0.5 millimeter but yep this is really good for a um, a $45 airbrush but I need to test out the colors so first I need to clean this and that's what we're about to do right now let me adjust the camera a bit so you guys can see this unfortunately well I can do this you know leave it right there because I need to put I need to pour this in here let me just pour some thinner Now, if you're saying, if you're thinking that any, if you buy a new airbrush, uh, it's like ah, I just have to pour a little water in, uh, you know, thinner and and do this, and you're done. No, thoroughly, thoroughly clean your airbrush. I have made many mistakes of leaving my airbrush alone, and I forgot to remove the paint, and that was a bit of a nightmare. And I'm going to say this, I'm not the only one that, that has this problem. I mean, we all go through it, you know, we may be in a rush or something gets us distracted or something like that. Always take care of your airbrush immediately. Oops. I'm going to put this right here. Put it right here. the needle. Always clean the needle. Clean this as well. And I'm going to clean it again because usually when you do this with like this, you know, you the needle will prevent you from going in there and cleaning it out. But here you go. See if I could see it in the light. Yeah, it looks nice and clean, but of course I can do that. Ooh, this came out. Be careful. Alright, hold on. Yank a bit. Pull it out. And put it back in again. There we go. Oh, it actually came out of the hole. Alright, so I gotta pull it out completely. And there we go. I like the gasket there. That way the paint doesn't go up and out. I'm going to clean the inside here. And then I'm going to replace everything back. I'm going to disconnect this. Put the other... 
um, the other nozzle, the 3.5, and the and get the other needle and put it in there. And we're going to test out colors and see how it looks. So give me a few moments. Okay, I'm going to test out a few colors that I have um, at various types of paints that I am that I use the most. So this is of course um, a, a gunmetal from Modo. This is a much more different um, quality of paint, which I'll do last. But I'm going to use a, um, Mr. Hobby Paints. This is, of course, the Acquiesce colors. This is uh, Launcher Strike Green. So, give it a good mix. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Not too much. Just enough for a good coverage. There we go. Use leveling thinner. I'm going to do equal parts. That should be fine. Now, whether you want to do it from the from the actual um, cup or doing it on another um, mixing mixing cup and then putting it in here, it's up to you. Everybody has their own techniques and ideas. Let me just adjust the camera so we can all see this. I'm going to give it another mix. Cover up with the cap. Good to have the cap on. At least I have caps enough of this and the other ones I can't find. I'm going to spray on this board to see how the coverage is. It feels like it needs a little bit more mixture. Let me just do this. I hear it brewing. Yep, and it comes out there. Let's try it again. Mm, yeah, I'm hearing a lot of. I'm hearing a lot of. Uh, like it's trying to come out. Always make sure you get enough thinner in your paints. Don't immediately pour it in there and call it a day and of course yes prepare it prior to you starting to paint Actually, I'm seeing some results here, but I'm gonna let me get something that's a lot of it easier to see. Hold on a second, cover that up. Oh yeah, here we go. Much much, much easier to use this. Now you can actually see this. Still getting okay. Now it's flowing. I 
I'm doing a Y, but let me see if I could do a, a little bit, like... That's not bad. Oh yeah, that's more controllable. Oh yeah. When you don't hear the actual crackling and grinding like that, now you have control. Much better. All right. Let's see how you work. You know what? Can I? Can you take some parts apart? And uh, maybe we can do this right. Yeah. Okay. Let's spray and pray. Oh yeah, this is beautifully smooth. Oh, it's coming out like butter. Like butter. I mean, granted, this, this kit was never prepared for painting at all. I just bought it for uh, giggles and shit. But this is a great test bag to see how it works on any paint. I, I knew this one day I was going to use it. Granted, um, also I didn't I didn't clean up the parts because some of these parts um, has been sitting in, in my in my um, cabinets for years. Actually, I had in a box. A few kits, a few of these were in a box, while others were in cabinets. And I was like at a point where I was about to uh, maybe throw them away. But I'm glad I did not because then this way I can try these out and see how it is. Hold on a second here. This actually reminds me of a good uh, model builder by the name of Too Old for Toys. I sent him, because th these were these um, um, first grade kits that came out that had like a little, um, like a little uh, electronic device that goes right behind here for video for like a some sort of arcade system and since I had no use for it I sent it to him directly and he sent me a few things which was you know much appreciative at the time I, I thank you very much to all for for sending me those things uh, maybe uh, let me see so that was green that was green and these were green cool see how easy it was I should get yeah I have my um, thing nearby now there is one thing that I am noticing that I am not I am enjoying. There is no back blast of any type. There is no um, there's no like um, paint mist coming out. That was an, a result of my um, my Iowata. Uh, granted, it is the Iowata is an old kit. desperate need of maintenance but this supersedes Iowa uh, in, in many uh, aspects but granted the Neo is not a high end it's more of an um, you know uh, an advanced airbrush I think I wetted this too much because I am seeing it coming out a little too wet but that's all right I can I can uh, I can work with this. this is just basically a test uh, where's my I had it here a moment ago. Oh yeah, there it's all. Let's get a few of these. 
It also depends on the amount of pressure you're putting on your parts. Obviously, you don't want to do high-end pressure. Um, high-end would be good for, like, priming. But for something like this that we're doing right now, a regular, you know, paint job, you definitely just need to control your... Um, control your... your paint flow. And, and just be patient. Just be patient. The results will come to you in no time. As long as you have an excellent airbrush, a good compressor, um, prepared paint well, you're, you're going to enjoy yourself. Like what I'm doing right now. Because this is actually my favorite airbrush at this moment. Wow. I haven't felt an airbrush like this when I went, when I, uh, and since I went to see a friend of mine, uh, Dokodu. Um, she has a Twitch screen. And she was, um, you know, I was looking at her rig, and she was actually, she had a, a couple of parts there. She actually allowed me to use her airbrush, which I forgot what it was. I think it was a Badger, or Prashant, I don't know. It is a little too wet, so I'm going to have to give it a second coat later on. But I was deeply impressed with how well the airbrush was. And I said to myself, yeah, I got to invest in one. Let me finish this up, and we'll go on to the next color, okay? Now that the green is drying, we're going to paint the white parts. But I'm not going to paint it white. I'm going to paint it gunmetal. Let's see how it looks. This is Modo gunmetal, by the way. It's already been prepared before. Take my time here with low pressure. And I don't have to rush it. Oh yeah. This is gonna be Nice and smooth. I'm going to try a little trick here in a minute. Once I'm done with this side of the leg, I'm going to show you something. So let's assume I want to do pre-shading. How accurate and detailed is the pre-shading? I'm going to go, I'm going to do control. Okay, it's a little fast. I guess maybe I can then lower the uh, PSI down. But I think this is where the rocker comes into place. Or this part. So I'm going to go all the way in. So I can push it in, but I cannot pull back. So air is coming out. I'm going to crease it a bit and then push it again here. My air. Nope. A little bit more back. Nope. A little bit more back. It also depends on your paint. find the right level or you know I think I can do like that well, am I going all the way back or oh damn. you know what <laughs> Yeah, I think, wait a minute. I'm having... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What am I doing wrong here? 
No, it doesn't want to go all the way back. Did I push it all the way back? Hold on a second. Hmm. Oh. I must have did something wrong. Hold on, now I gotta fix this. <laughs> it was working a minute ago. Oh my god, this thing unrocked itself. The um the actual this. I don't know, maybe when I was push pulling it in or something? I don't know what I was doing wrong. All right, let's try this again. But it was working a moment ago. All right, there we go. User error. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right, so. Let's say I want to... There we go. Now, I can control this better. And I don't, I don't have to like, go crazy at like, with my, with my finger pressing down on this, going all, and then because, <sighs> when you pull your finger back on an airbrush, sometimes you go way too back and then you put a lot more paint into the area you want. It's, that's, um, that's a problem that I've been having a lot with when I do pre shading If I can control it, my pre shading like I'm doing right now, then it will work. I guess I'm gonna need a little bit more practice with this guy. But it is working the way I want. So good to see that it was working. I decided to make a little mistake. Maybe I didn't tighten the uh, the uh, nut that was holding the needle. You uh, you live and learn. You figure these out. Take. This is why I'm practicing now, and not doing it on a, a kit that I, I definitely want to, uh, you know, do a lot of work on. Okay, let me finish up this which is ridiculous to see and then we'll put it together and then we'll do a final um, conversation on this airbrush and I'll give you my thoughts all right here's the uh, Adele in first grade already painted uh, paint came out nice and smooth using uh, lacquer based paint I don't see no um, issues with the paint quality, like um, whether it sometimes it picks up particles and things like that, but it goes nice and smooth. It it leveled up very well. Pretty neat. I kind of like how I painted this. Yeah, I didn't paint. I, I painted the clear part. No big deal. I mean, this is this was all basically a test on how this airbrush worked, and I didn't have a display stand where I can actually put the airbrush. I'm using this as my. Uh, stand to hold up my airbrush but yeah this is a high quality advanced airbrush from Gala uh, Galair Gal I know I'm saying it wrong but the GAD the GA sorry the GHAD 39 is on sale on Amazon for a good $49 plus you know that's with tax and all that stuff and if you have Prime you'll get it in the next day or two days depending on your you know if you need it now or later this is a considered the budget airbrush and it surpasses that of the neo that I have and the wave airbrush I used before 
Granted, this is not a, uh, you know, a throwaway airbrush. You definitely need to clean it. You need to maintain it. It has great options, great features. You can put one of those, oh, let me turn it off. You can put on one of those um, uh, hot swappable devices, uh, two um, connectors on your um, on your hoses so you can switch from one airbrush to another and this is of course a definite replacement to my knee my Iowata Neo airbrush I feel bad giving it up but I'm still gonna be using it I'll use it as like a as a backup for like priming and I'll just dedicate this only for airbrush for airbrushing now should you get this no you should be having this since last year this should have been in your inventory decades ago <laughs> I, I so yes you do have to buy it you de definitely need to get this this is actually a great airbrush granted there are better airbrushes out there um, which I've never tested I'm not going to begin testing every airbrush in the world there are uh, influencers, uh, influencers on YouTube that can um, do a better job than I can, but considering the work that I've been doing lately and the quality, I definitely needed an upgrade. And for a good budget, it's not bad. You could probably get the same results on a hundred dollar, or hundred fifty, maybe a two hundred dollar airbrush. But this definitely takes the cake. And I had to get this because I'm actually in the middle of doing another review of the Vic Paints, and I'm going to be you know, segueing into part two of my Vic Paint review, uh, Vic Hobbies review, using this airbrush. So that will be another, I'll be testing the um, painting of the of parts and kits using this airbrush compared to my Neo, which unfortunately is not the best uh, work, uh, be best workhorse you could say. So, with that being said, I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. This is my review of the Gad 39. I act note this was not given to me. I purchased it on my own because I definitely need a good airbrush. And what can I say but stay tuned for more tool time with Starter Prime coming soon. You guys all have a great day.